Welcome everyone. I'm Rory McKay, a sales engineer for Act Zero. A quick housekeeping note before we get started. For those in the audience that are joining us live today, at the bottom of your screen, there are three important tabs. A questions tab, which can be used to submit any questions during the presentation. An attachments tab, this is where you can find links to resources referenced during the presentation. And a rate us and feedback tab, we're focused on delivering real value to our customers. We'd love to hear your thoughts about the presentation and, of course, whether you'd be interested in hearing more about this topic or any others. Today, we're going to explore the similarities and differences between an MDR, Managed Detection and Response, versus an MSSP, Managed Security Service Provider. We're going to talk about new challenges, an overview of the MDR and MSSP. We'll look at managed tools and managed threat detection. We'll examine what this idea of managed is in context to both. We'll also look at key elements as to how they function. And lastly, where they shine. I'll review a chart and summarize at the end and provide relative links. Again, my name is Rory and like many of us, I began my IT career working for a vendor. I've also worked with various MSSPs over the years, and I've also got to experience the other side of the coin as a reseller who offered MSP services. And something that I quickly came to realize was when I tried to develop a service model and pricing, there really was no consistency. Doing my research, there were services offered all over the map that ranged in variety and scale, and it made it difficult for me to figure out what I wanted to offer, as well as how I wanted to charge fairly for both myself and my customers. And I'm hoping to eliminate that confusion with this talk. Emerging technologies is a constant theme. Uh, they can usually end up changing the landscape of a corporation completely or not at all. And Usually, this promotes new challenges. There's a lack of staff expertise, administratively being able to handle the workload they introduce, or even migrating them from on-prem services to the cloud, for example. And of course, the threat landscape is ever-changing as well. At one time, you could have a simple antivirus program, a firewall, and some type of email protection. Now, more recently, or over the years, there's now been a, a need for an always-on approach, a 24-7 type of vigilance you need to protect your network. With this comes increased difficulty to find security-talented staff with the right skill sets in configuration, management, and response. And companies are spending way too many resources to keep up with these challenges. All of these sort of gaps have given rise to the MSSP and later the MBR service models in order to fill these gaps or an attempt to fill these gaps. And there are some key differences that I'm going to examine to help you decide what's right for you. I'm gonna start with MSSPs. Chronologically, they came along first, so it just makes sense. Initially, their goal was to provide installation, configuration, maintenance of security equipment, and over time, this involved sometimes utilizing new tools, such as a SIM, Security Information and Event Management Tool. Now, these are preventative measures that involve a defensive position and also alerting the customer if a security issue arises. This also led to, again, over time, the overlap of services. The differentiation in pricing also makes it difficult to quantify, leading to an inconsistent end user experience. The emergence of SaaS services has started to complicate the offering even further, coupled with the fact that other vendors are now offering configuration and setup services complementary, which are similar to MSSPs, and some even going so far as to require their customers have a hands-off approach when it comes to configuration and they wish to do it themselves. Now, MDRs don't configure the security appliances like firewalls that I mentioned earlier. Um, they, again, I use this rather loosely because they will configure part of the tools they require for their service. 
And it's this service which combines threat hunting, monitoring, and response that includes a 24-7 SOC, a security operations center. These are staff that are highly skilled in threat monitoring, detecting, and hunting for attackers. They also provide incident response as well. And all of these are incorporated into their standard workflows and procedures. Now, I spoke about this aspect of managed, and I'm going to talk more about what it means in regards to MSSPs. With MSSPs, it means configuration, patching, compliance, and keeping the devices up to date for operation. Now, this is that preventative approach I was referring to earlier. A good MSSP will configure firewalls, antivirus, possibly an endpoint scanner, and they'll provide alerting to feed this information back to the customer. Now, managed in response or regards to an MDR, this simply means safeguarding your IT assets at the endpoint, network, and cloud, as well as your people. The goal here is to keep them all safe from security threats, and they use preventative and reactive or response type methods. A good MDR will configure EDR, endpoint detection tools that will uh, respond to or allow them to feed input into their own machine learning models and prevent or remediate threats for the customer. They'll work in unison with a next-gen antivirus. One of the key functions to consider with MSSPs is that they manage security assets, and this includes prevention methods and are generally task-based contracts and services that focus on these aspects. Now, as a result, there are some limitations, a lack of personalized support, a lack of uh, understanding of key security issues and its impact specifically to your IT organization, and also limited monitoring and visibility of this threat landscape. So this is what kind of gave rise to the MDR service model. If we look at the MDR, this is a service that combines the threat intelligence and threat hunting, and also response to mitigate and contain threats, with some being more efficient than others, of course. Now, this is in uh, response to this sort of gap. Now, the key here is that they will use threat intelligence to uh, incorporate into their workflows, right? And also, they want to empower the client's existing IT staff with the right knowledge while ensuring seamless protection and eliminating redundancy of alerts or noise. And this is done through consolidation and proper alert management while protecting their clients at the same time. And when I say noise, what I mean by that is not needlessly sending a plethora of alerts. They are real-time, clear, and concise information based on MITRE attack techniques. So we're going to take it to the gateway or the entry point of the network and start at network defense. And firewalls are an integral part of network defense. So examining where they shine, simply, uh, this is in response to, over time, the firewall initially was a, a rather simplistic device. It wasn't too complicated. There was allow and deny for specific TCP traffic or even IPs or UDP traffic. Um, now, this has kind of evolved into a next-gen firewall. First, they kind of added an IDS and IPS as modules that you could put into the firewall. But now there are more complex options with universal threat management. And this is where MSSPs can install and manage them to set up an excellent defense. Whereas an MDR, instead of configuring and installing, uh, it will incorporate the firewall and its information into their workflows to maintain this constant vigilance I spoke of earlier. Now, this Information involves advanced threat research, analytics, and forensics, and it provides them with a number of details. They use this particularly to respond to and deal with these threats or activities so that you don't have to. Now we'll take it to the end point, and let's talk about the managed aspect of antivirus. Antivirus is uh, another integral part of the solution, and in the early years, of course, there was a virus definition file or a DAT file, and as long as you kept it up to date, 
it was pretty simplistic and you had fairly good protection. Of course, it's evolved over the years to become a next-gen antivirus. And similar to firewalls, it's become more complex. And MSSPs provide particularly good configuration and maintenance in regards to this. Now, this is where the configuration of tools of MDR uh, comes into play. The MDR will use a type of their uh, either their own or a next-gen antivirus. They will configure this. And while it is preventative in nature, it also brings these response features uh, because it incorporates this technology uh, and helps boost their advanced threat intelligence, their behavioral detections, and other threat modeling uh, systems that they use. Right. So when it comes down to it, the basic difference here is they will both provide this protection and the MDR will go a little bit further to bolster their models. If we look at a SIM, security information and event management tool, it's something that can be rather difficult to configure and maintain. It provides a wealth of information that MSSPs can help configure to get the most out of this technology. They work well for many non-complex alerts and they provide what's called a single variable analysis. Unfortunately, this is sometimes limited for analyzing the numerous alerts that will trigger and it makes it difficult for analyzing key data points in the cloud for account takeovers. And this is simply because it lacks the advanced filtering and other metrics that you need to prioritize legitimate attacks quickly. An MDR in this case may incorporate a SIM into their technologies, or they may have developed a technology that functions similar to a SIM, and this is so they can use it for their workflows to be more efficient and effective they can or may provide access to the logs they collect for the customer, similar to how a SIM would. If we look at infrastructure, MSSPs are a great benefit for customizing these solutions. They provide guidance on attack prevention and can inform you of emerging threats with proper prevention methods. While an MDR will help with patching advice on these assets and also provide protection that goes beyond prevention to respond to these current and emerging threats real time. Now, again, I mentioned the patching advice and most MDRs will either recommend a tool of some sort that is necessary to help with the patching. But the key here is they provide the right information for you to do it most efficiently and prioritize. When we look at managed identity and access management, MSSPs can help maintain these authentication methods for single sign-on capabilities. They'll ensure they're patched for, to prevent misuse and unauthorized access. While an MDR will monitor, or in the case of the breach and misuse, they will then take appropriate action to prevent loss or breach. An EDR scanner or endpoint detection and response scanner typically involves an agent that runs on the machine to obtain log information and enable response to security threats. It is the counterpart to next-gen antivirus. It works in unison and it's right at the source where attacks often occur and are highly effective. MSSPs will or can manage EDR scanners for the customers. However, they do not always offer response to these threats, and typically they will just send alerts. MDRs, they'll configure and manage their own scanner, while at the same time, they'll take action to prevent the attacker or threat. And this is also the challenge of setting up proper policies on these scanners. Uh, many of them, out of the box, are not configured to properly handle all aspects and threat tactics that come uh, through the network natively. Now, this becomes an increasing challenge when you look at MSSPs because you need to send clear and concise alert information. And also, you need to be able to configure it to properly identify and detect threats. This is where MDR will shine because they configure and customize them to meet their workflows in order to properly remediate threats and thoroughly investigate attacker activities they will stop them in the network before it's infiltrated or as it's being infiltrated. Now, MDRs will also combine other elements beyond the endpoint scanner to include extended detection and response, or XDR. Now, this will include 
the network and cloud as a broader, more holistic approach beyond traditional prevention methods. Now, if we look at IAAS and SAAS, which is you know, infrastructure as a service and software as a service tools, many organizations have migrated some or almost all of their services and infrastructure into the cloud. It's fast, flexible, and reliable. However, the trade-off is that it exposes unprotected APIs or application programming interfaces. We've heard the term and cyber criminals eyes light up when they hear this because this enables possible exploitation of overprivileged accounts, uh, misconfigured controls, and this will essentially give them super user access to the attacker if or when the service is breached. Now, some MSSPs offer a secure data center to host their services to get around this. And this provides a, an additional blanket of protection. Um, they configure these environments to ensure that they are as secure and safe as can be, all to protect the customer or end user. And MDR in this case, it's really important to remember that the MDR would provide guidance and advice. In addition to being able to detect and respond to these threats, they can also sift through this data and examine more than just a single variable analysis that I spoke to earlier. They'll include things like login patterns or locations and IPs of known attackers for ATOs. They use something called anomalous detections. So what's in it for me? And I'm hoping by this point, it's a little more clearer than mud. And simply put, an MSSP is a good choice when your IT team lacks the skills or the time to efficiently and effectively manage cybersecurity systems that you own or plan to own internally. And this includes changes in uptime or monitoring for items such as you know, networks and log management that your team really needs to use for reporting or data processing. Or perhaps you need to outsource basic security services such as alert triage. triage. Or maybe you require on-demand skills to help manage existing security tools like firewalls, web content filtering, and potentially infrastructure. Respectively, an MDR is a good choice when you don't know what technologies to add and manage from a security standpoint, of course, while at the same time, you want to use a comprehensive service to block attacks on your endpoints, your mobile devices, your network, and your cloud services. Now, your company may also have a considerable cybersecurity regulatory framework that they are trying to achieve or meet, or perhaps some customer requirements that are difficult to achieve with the people, the processes, and technology that is currently in place, or perhaps this is coming from an insurance provider. Sometimes you may not actually know what vulnerabilities or risks that you need to be able to respond to, to protect your systems from a cyber attack or you are possibly concerned about your actual ability to effectively respond to threats 24 seven, and you're unsure of how you would re react or deal with racing into the company at four in the morning to address an alert that is all possibly already too late. Perhaps you're also concerned that you're not protected against advanced or emerging threats or the latest headline attacks, or maybe you receive no alerts at all or too many alerts, or too many false positives from the current tools or providers you're using. Or maybe you're just overwhelmed with alerts like many of us. Now, sometimes these alerts also turn out to be false positives, but there are also critical elements that can involve you missing these alerts that are most important. In summary, um, it's important to really consider these outcomes. When you look at managed for MSSPs, again, this means installation, configuration, and patching of security devices. Now managed when it comes to MDR, again, it simply means safeguarding your IT assets with a service. They use their workflows and their staff in 24 seven format. Also, you need to know that or examine and consider that cost isn't really the whole story here. Consider the service that best eliminates the time and the risk, which are most important in this scenario. 
what best complements your IT team. Also examine your own capabilities and see what's right for you. I hope this was able to provide some clarity. And for more information, we also have uh, a few resources available. There is a white paper that talks about some of the things I discussed, uh, MDR or MSSP for cybersecurity. We also have the cyber vendor evaluation package. And my favorite, the ransomware readiness assessment. And of course, this would involve us seeing where you stack up with us and without us. It's an evaluation tool. It's quick, it's easy. There's no cost or commitment. We'll measure things like uh, the blocking rate, the dwell time of how long an attacker could potentially stay in your network undetected. We'll look at the signal to noise ratio and of course, examine the dark web. We can let you know what accounts or corporate IDs are compromised and perhaps any passwords that are clear text for the world to see. I wanna thank everyone for attending and I'm gonna pause for a moment and review some of the live questions that were submitted. Number one, is it possible to use both MDR and MSSP services? Yes. Uh, a lot of people, there's maybe there might be a little bit of a misconception that they uh, contradict each other, but in, in essence, they do not. They're both specifically created to fill certain gaps, right? Um, you can, by all means, just determine what services you need. Do you need someone to maintain and configure these elements? And then, of course, do you need someone to maintain constant vigilance on your network? Number two, my experience has been that MSSPs are relatively different in terms of scope, price, and actual outcomes varies so much. That's right, yeah. Uh, so some MSPs, well, again, then this is something that requires further definition. You have MSPs, which are managed service providers, and then you have MSSPs, which are, again, the focus of this chat, managed security service providers. They all have different models um, and you can have an MSSP that varies so much that it will offer the advanced services that an MDR will provide. It all just depends on price and you know how much you're willing to pay really. Um, the key thing that is kind of reassuring about the MDR is you can, you know, kind of going back to the first question is you could couple an MDR or an, a, a, an MSSP service with an MDR to provide what's right for you. The nice thing about MDR is it's usually more simplified pricing models, which makes it easier to, to manage and, and kind of, uh, you know, see that aspect or value, right? Uh, now, I, I just have time for one last question, and uh, this is the, the third one we've got here. Uh, what do you mean when you say MSSPs keep things up to date and running? Well, uh, I mean, as, as you know, all IT equipment and software requires regular patching and maintenance, of course, right? Um, this is to, you know, maintain efficiency, eliminate bugs. And from a security standpoint, though, it's very important because this addresses common vulnerabilities. And these vulnerabilities are what's really important because there are a lot of gateways into networks um, for attackers. And they involve this elaborate scheme that you'll see, they'll start to expose these vulnerabilities and then they'll utilize those for points of entry. And this is where MSSPs ensure that maintaining this stuff to prevent it on the devices, that it happens for you, right? Uh, whereas an MDR, they'll provide advice and guidance on this stuff Again, so you can prioritize them. And whether it's, as I mentioned before, recommending a patch management software, the key is that they'll provide the right information to help you prioritize and get you on track. Again, I wanna thank you all for joining. My name is Rory Mackay, sales engineer, Act Zero, signing off.